So I work mostly um, on the economic development and engagement side of the house at RENC. Um, and what I wanted to do today was talk a little bit about uh, the National Consortium for Data Science, which is a, a data initiative that we've been uh, working on for the past two or three years. Uh, this originated in 2013, uh, and share with you uh, some of the original motivations for wanting to go in this direction, uh, some of the initial programs that we've spun up around it, uh, share with you some of the lessons uh, that we've learned in this process, as well as um, talk about some future directions um, that, that we plan on going in the coming year or so. So RENC, um, you may or may not be familiar with, but it is located at uh, UNC Chapel Hill. Um, it is a, um, uh, a multi-institutional research organization focused on high performance computing, advanced networking, data visualization. Um, but it was established in 2004 by Dan Reed, who is probably someone who is, who is well known to you. Um, and he was the originating director, then Stan A. Halt came in in 2010 uh, and has been leading the organization for the last five years or so. Um, and from the, from the outset, uh, these issues of uh, HPC and, um, and, and its use in domain scientists, or in, in the domain sciences, really the emphasis was that these problems are large enough that they really need to be addressed outside the bounds of a single institution. And so from the outset, having this be a collaboration between UNC Chapel Hill, Duke, and NC State was very much a part of our business model, and it remains to this day. Um, our, governing, our governing board consists of the chief research officers and the provosts of each of the three universities. Um, as I mentioned, foundation, uh, the foundational technologies that we deal with are, are data science, uh, computing, networking, uh, software development, and visualization, and we have a wide variety of projects uh, in each of those areas. But those are not really um, being pursued for their own sake. They're really being viewed through the lenses of, of, of domain sciences, uh, and specifically health and biosciences, environmental sciences. We do a lot of work with um, storm surge along the North Carolina and the southeastern coast, um, hydrology, uh, and increasingly, um, use of HPC in social sciences is, is, is becoming an increasing part of our business. My colleague Charles Schmidt is going to talk about health and biosciences in the next, in the next segment and some specific genome-related work that we're doing. Um, our collaborators at the university level uh, are, of course, uh, very important to us. We get about half of our funding from federally sponsored sources, uh, NSF, NIH. Um, um, but what I'm going to focus on today is really our engagement work and our focus towards um, industry and particularly around the National Consortium for Data Science. Stan Mayholt, uh, in 2013, uh, challenged the organization and the subset within the group uh, called the Renty Data Working Group, which is a group of Renty staff and, and, and faculty members from the three institutions, to think big about this emerging field of data science. And how do we take all the hype that is around uh, data science and try to turn it into something tangible? What could we do that was, that was new and additive to the discussion? And uh, this group sort of went away and came back and said, well, what constraints are we operating under? And he said, well, no constraints. And what about budget? Don't worry about budget. What about a timeline? Don't focus on the timeline. Just try to think as big as you can. And, and, and in a lot of ways, this was a good reflection of the RENC model because we're not a traditional research institute. We're not a traditional academic department. And oftentimes, that gives us the freedom to be able to think in these terms. Um, and so that group went away for about 60 or 90 days and, and ended up drafting a white paper that was about 25 or 30 pages, and it called for a national center uh, for data science. And what that is, and this may resonate with a lot of you, I think this really has echoes of the work that was done in the mid-1980s with Larry Smarr around the original HPC. Uh, supercomputing centers. Um, and so what this group envisioned was a either a single brick and mortar facility, maybe it would be in the Research Triangle Park, maybe it would be a network of four or five of them around the country, um, but it would be a, um, a leading edge research center um, with world-class facilities and world-class academics and industry partners working hand in hand to advance the, the the domain of this new emerging field. Uh, so think of a place with experimental 
um, compute and hardware and data storage and networking um, in the basement, uh, able to attract uh, leading scholars from around the world. It might have an industrial advisory board. It might have a um, business incubation unit that would spin out new entrepreneurial ideas within this space. Um, and that was the original concept. And um, uh, and then eventually, uh, you know, we started talking about how might one try to operationalize this idea. And I remember being asked to work on the budget for this. Um, and when I got to $75 million, I stopped and said, you know, we're just emerging from, uh, from the recession. There clearly is not um, the atmosphere in North Carolina or, or many places to try to stand up something of this scale at, at, at this point. So maybe we ought to think about it a little bit differently. So we asked the group to go away and come back and, and, and revise their thoughts somewhat. Um, and they did. And they came back and said, uh, how about a consortium model? Because really, to get to the ultimate goal of that, the key part of it is getting the, the right partners around the table. Um, and so it, it's, it's really the intersection of um, this public-private partnership where you have industry members, members from, um, from the academic sector, um, people from government agencies working together to try to solve big data science problems. That can be done within a consortium structure. And maybe this could become an on-ramp or a gateway to an eventual physical site and brick and mortar place in five or ten years. Um, so that's, that's the pivot that we took. Um, and I was looking at, as I was putting this um, uh, presentation together over the weekend, uh, I actually found this um, slide from 2013, which actually originated as some whiteboard scribblings of ours in our early planning. Uh, and as we were trying to describe this, we had an initial group of stakeholders from the private sector, um, uh, as well as from the academic sector, and I'll talk about those in just a second. But we wanted to try to describe what the early work of this consortium might do, and 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 take that from what the total realm of possibilities were to something that was a little bit more tangible. Uh, and so, if you look. Um, uh, where we originated was this idea of a large R&D center, which in the upper right-hand corner, and obviously that would be the most complex in terms of coordination and the most expensive in terms of resources. Um, but we felt that in order to make progress, we wanted this consortium to try to uh, ad advance somewhat and at least have programs in, in each of these four major sectors, uh, public policy, physical assets, thought leadership, um, and uh, workforce development activities. And so we highlighted in our initial stakeholder meeting um, several areas in each of those that we thought that we could start to make progress on. Um, and so this was the plan going back uh, to about this time in 2013 uh, that our initial group of founding members um, uh, wanted us to, to pursue. And so we decided to focus on um, uh, several things. One was um, a seed grant program, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, another was we wanted to make some progress in the ed educational space. We felt that we had some technological solutions to do a distributed infrastructure among some member org organizations uh, and felt that um, there were some early conversations with the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy around um, genomic sciences. Um, and we had uh, we were in the planning stages for a major event um, and felt that we could um, uh, make progress in that area. So, so what is it about a consortium um, that made all this possible? Well, first of all, I think the, the, the stakes are obviously um, less than trying to put a shovel in, in, in the ground and start constructing buildings. Um, and like I said, it really comes down to the individual organizations and the trust building that takes place by getting those partners around the table working towards a common goal. Um, you're able to try you know, different models. You're able to be flexible. Uh, and it gives everybody a voice um, to be heard at the table. But at the end of the day, this is really all about community uh, and trying, trying to build a new organization. So mission and vision, these are sort of the lofty, heavily wordsmith language that gets used in these kinds of things. But, but to focus on the goals, um, to engage, coordinate, facilitate, and apply, um, we very much want it to be an action-oriented organization um, and try to, um, try to provide value back to our members um, just as quickly 
as we could. So this is a snapshot of current members. It's actually a little bit different from the original founders that came together in 2013. Um, and we have a membership structure and there's tiers within both the industry side of things, uh, the academic side of things, and then the nonprofit government side of things. Other than the new members that have joined from the beginning, um, Deloitte is relatively new. They joined in 2014. Um, UNC Greensboro is new. Um, EMC joined uh, just in the early part of 2015. And the symbol down on the bottom is actually the University of North Carolina system offices. Um, and they're an important stakeholder in this. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why in just a second. Um, so we've had some new members come on just um, over, uh, since, since the original group got together in late 2013. And like I said, the focus, you know, one of the challenges that we've had is really to try to articulate benefits in a, in a, in a short period of time. Um, and we were determined that if we were going to have people support us through a membership fee structure, um, that we didn't want that to be a one-time annual event. We wanted that to, to, to recur, obviously, uh, as we move towards financial sustainability. And so being able to provide benefits back to them in a tangible way um, uh, on relatively short order is, is, is what we've been charged with. And, and um, I think we've met many of those um, questions. The, the, this is probably a better snapshot of this. We engaged a company called CMG Partners, which is a strategic marketing uh, consultant, um, to really help us poll our members and, and, and get at this question of what is the value proposition of being associated with an organization like this. Um, and the word or the phrase that came up time and time again across various sectors was that of collaborative access. How do we, in a pre-competitive space, get together with other leading organizations that are wrestling with a lot of the same issues and share ideas, share knowledge, share challenges, um, and start to break down some of these barriers in order to um, uh, derive either business benefit or organizational benefit out of the broader association. So some highlights over the last um, couple of years, I had mentioned um, the Genomic Science Leadership Summit and the, and the charge that was given to us by the OSTP um, around producing a white paper that was looking at the future of genomic sciences, um, uh, the intersection of genomic sciences and data sciences. And, and, and that was done through really the kickoff event for the entire consortium in late 2013. Uh, that's a white paper that is um, available on our website. It was uh, keynoted by Eric Green, who was the director of the um, Human Genome Research Institute uh, at NIH. Uh, we had about 300 people in attendance, and, and it, was, it, was a, it was an excellent way to really kick this off. Uh, that was an event in, um, in Chapel Hill. Um, since then, we've, had a, uh, uh, we've kicked off a faculty fellows program. We've done that twice now. I'll talk about that um, again in just a second. Um, we've got a series of other recurring events that we've been experimenting with over the last couple of years and, and, and honing as we, as we go forward. Programmatically, there's really four major buckets of activity that, that, that we've concentrated on over the last couple of years. One is the seed grant program that I mentioned. Uh, another that is really starting this year um, is a series of working groups. We have three of them for this year. Um, there's a series of events that we do on um, uh, mostly the academic member campuses within the Research Triangle area. Uh, a lot of them have to do with um, data science careers. We had one um, uh, just last week um, that had about 120 um, students from 30 or 40 different majors from across the campus um, meeting with a panel of our industry members talking about um, careers in data science, what kind of skills they need to be developing at this stage uh, in their career. Um, and uh, those have been very popular both, I think, for the students on our member campuses as well as for our, our member, um, our industry members. Um, and we have a, a shared distributed infrastructure um, that's housing data sets across uh, right now three uh, institutions, UNC Chapel Hill, uh, NC State, um, and UNC Charlotte. So the data science faculty 
fellow program, um, we've operated this now for two years. And, and as I mentioned, this was really designed to try to get at um, early stage uh, faculty in various data science fields um, and to try to provide them with a, uh, a bit of funding. In, in year one, we uh, offered five fellowships for $30,000. This past year, we offered three uh, at $50,000 and focused it on early career faculty. Um, and the model is that in order to be eligible for these funds, faculty members need to come from um, one of the academic institutions that, that, that comprises the consortium. Uh, and the evaluation of the proposals uh, are done by the industry members. And so it starts to get at this question of, um, industry-informed or, or, or directed research. Um, the duration is for a year, um, and but a desired outcome of this is that if a particular, if GE, for example, um, through the course of this project, um, enjoys uh, the work that's taking place by one of the faculty fellows and wants to uh, establish a bilateral relationship with that person. We're absolutely encouraging of that, and, 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 and that would be a great outcome if that were to take place. So I had mentioned in our quad chart about wanting to make progress on the ed educational front. Uh, we kicked off um, in 2014 a short course series called Data Matters. We're doing this in partnership with the Odom Institute for Social Science Research at UNC. Um, in our first year, we had about 110 attendees um, and uh, from across industry, academia, state and local government, uh, uh, the federal government as well, uh, and instructors both from our membership and beyond. Um, and uh, this has been a big success. I think we had eight or nine courses in this, in this first year. Uh, we're getting ready to um, uh, kick this off again um, coming up in the last week of June. Uh, this summer, um, uh, and so if there's an interest there, uh, the URL datamatters.org um, will have a complete list of courses and 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 instructors. Um, I mentioned the working groups that we're spinning up this year, um, and the focus of these is really how do we go from this very high level 50,000 foot notion of data science into something much more tangible um, and actionable for our members. Um, and so we, we proposed a series of uh, probably eight or 10 working group possibilities and in, and in dialogue with our members uh, settled on three of them for the coming year. Um, one is focused on the data challenges around IoT, the Internet of Things. Another is on uh, data science challenges in the U.S. workforce, uh, workforce development issues, and another is on anonymizing data uh, and, and use of synthetic data sets. Um, the first of those is the one that I think has progressed the most, um, and we have planned, in partnership with the National Science Foundation, a series of workshops, the first one to take place uh, at Cisco headquarters in San Jose at the end of um, July, and that's on under the theme of uh, the industrial internet, and again, focused on uh, the data science around the internet of things. And NSF is interested in, in, in helping to shape a research agenda and, and to try to inform their future decisions about funding directions, um, and we're happy to be a part of that and in partnership with them. I had mentioned this distributed collaboration with um, our members at UNC Charlotte and NC State. This used the IROD's data management um, technology to help uh, pull together a collaborative data store across multiple campuses. Uh, it's also leveraging NC State's virtual computing lab. Uh, and this is focused around the theme of risk mitigation and risk management. Um, it is, um, it's funded by the state of North Carolina, and this was a strategic investment that was made uh, by them to try to focus on areas of um, particular opportunity where it, it was felt that the state of North Carolina had had some unique um, uh, advantages and could be able to make a difference. And so we're excited to have just kicked that off just in the past month or so. So uh, we've identified five phases in, in, in thinking about consortium development and what, and what these are really 
all about. And, and, and there's no real science behind this. Uh, this is completely sort of um, self-identified or self-created. But uh, And we've talked, I think, about almost all of these, certainly one through three. Um, the ideation notion, you know, for us, it began with a white paper process. The formation began with getting the initial stakeholders around the table, developing bylaws, developing a membership agreement, thinking about structure for the first time. Uh, in phase three, spinning up some early programs. Um, and phase four is growth, and growth can mean additional members, or it might mean additional program complexity. Um, and I like to think that that we're somewhere between three and four in our in our iteration of this. Some days I think we're back at one or two, and, and others um, uh, perhaps further along in four. But but I think we're right between this notion of implementation and growth. And and the key part of that is trying to transition from it being a, um, a founder-driven process to a member-driven process. And that, you know, we talk about that as sort of the, the inflection point where we want to get to. So some of the lessons that we've learned, um, we've talked about this already. It's imperative to try to show uh, value early, um, and uh, but that's challenging across such a broad membership, um, and developing a value proposition for each of those uh, is something that needs to be done. Um, our members are very large, complex organizations, and, and being able to communicate um, uh, the value of, of the consortium and what it means and how they can best um, contribute to it uh, within their groups is challenging itself. Um, but finally, I wanted to focus on this uh, this last one, which is that the incubating organization, Renty in this case, must play a leadership role in the early stages, but you also need to be able to achieve this point where where the main driver of, um, of the consortium is coming from the members itself. So I'll wrap up on this. These are some future directions. Um, uh, there was a uh, process that is actually underway right now that the National Science Foundation uh, is sponsoring for big data regional innovation hubs. You may have heard about that. There's a series of meetings around the country. Uh, one took place yesterday in Durham, um, and we're pleased to announce that um, we are going to be leading a proposal in partnership with Georgia Tech um, for the southeastern region. Um, uh, to establish a regional data innovation hub. There's a solicitation that's out um, uh, due at the end of June. Um, so we're excited about that. And we have an, an emerging partnership with the North Carolina Board of Science, Technology, and Innovation, uh, which has been a leading force for economic development um, uh, within the state of North Carolina for about 20 or 25 years. And, and um, with that, I will close. And, and, uh, and thank you very much.